the Commonwealth Games is coming to Birmingham. And Team England want to win the first ever 3x3 basketball gold medals on home soil. Hi, I'm Sol, and these are my friends Miles and Kofi. We grew up on the courts of Birmingham and against all odds, we became professional basketball players. But it's not been an easy journey. Just jumped for a rebound, got elbowed in my rib cage but I ended up rupturing my kidney. I felt the air when the knife went right past my neck. If it would have been like an inch or two closer, probably could have been all over. My friends are now competing for a once in a lifetime opportunity to play at their home games. So it's a two year project really leading up to the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, it's gonna be real competitive. Obviously people want to make the team. The guys that pick up the principles really quickly, those are the ones that, you know, I really look for. We've played all over the world, but will Kofi and Miles get to represent their city on their home court? So I first started playing basketball when I was like 12. I started quite late actually. My brother was playing. As a younger brother, you just feel left out. So I was like, nah, I wanna play. Begging my mom to tell my brother to drag me along to his sessions. And that's when I met Miles and Kofi. Miles Hessen is the GB co-captain for the five versus five team. He's played in Germany, France, and now he plays in Japan. It's so hard to get anything out of Miles. Not on the basketball court, and the basketball court is not always going to do his thing. Off the court, he's super humble, um, doesn't really do small talk. And he's just like, yeah, he's just like that older brother, like. <laughs> Definitely been visualising playing in front of the home, the home crowd and getting that gold medal. And that's, that's, that's really something that nice. I really want to do. Kofi's the complete opposite. <laughs> Kofi's an extrovert, super extrovert. This season, he made history when he became the all-time leading British scorer in a single game with 46 points. Played in Iceland, Switzerland and Sweden before returning to play in the British Basketball League. Loves proving people wrong, um, but in the right way. I just do, mate. It, it annoys a lot of people, but it catches people's eyes, so I mean, any attention is good attention, I'll say. I invited Miles and Kofi down to the Birmingham Yo, Basketball man. Arena, this where it all man. started. What's good, my bro? My guy. How you doing, man? Me? It's been a minute, man. Yeah, I don't know. We haven't minute, all been man. in the how same room for, I don't know how long, really. Definitely brought us back, man. Brought back a lot of memories as well. I see the changes in here as well, man. We actually was here from, like, the ground up, man. It's we're still got the same smell, though. Yeah, we're, we're a part of the reason why the club is... Kofi and Miles beer. Smell it. Hard work. <laughs> We're part of the reason why the club is how they are. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. and yeah, man, we sh I think we should be proud for sure. Like everyone that I've met is basically through basketball. The, all the journeys I've been on is because of basketball and it all started here, man. It's, it's, it's crazy to think. Whoa, <laughs> no way. I was not expecting That's probably the Iverson kit, yeah. Like the, the Iverson's on as well. The same one that Yo, you was yeah. a lion, bro. And then look, the Jordan 11s. <laughs> I ain't never, I've never seen this picture, but that's, uh, that's how I remember it. I think you might have had the white one with the white headband. Yeah, I had the white Iverson free headband. I got it off eBay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had the white matching sleeve. Sleeve as well. And I used to just white rock all it. And then it got to the point where I was wearing tuber grips. So I'd buy a tuber grip and I'd cut it. And I wear it on my arm. It's funny because I actually still play with a sleeve now, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, man, that's wild. Miles and Kofi have a long way to go before they get their hands on a gold medal. First, they need to qualify for Team England, and that means staying healthy and mentally locked in for the next few months. Three, two, one, up. Oh, well. Salt, I swear to God. Mm. Bro, what, mm. what am I doing, bro? He's, he's like, in, bro. doing his job. Doing Do yours. His job, exactly. Make sure you watch the documentary, man. 
Can't take right you seriously here. anyway. This is the first time 3x3 basketball will appear at the Commonwealth Games. And it's set to be Birmingham's showcase sport. But if Kofi and Miles want to play for Team England, they've got to get used to the 3x3 basketball rules, which are very different from the game we play professionally. Welcome to 3x3 Basketball. Pronounced 3x3, it's been dubbed the number one urban team sport in the world. 3x3 is played on a half court with one hoop. Each team has three players with one substitute. The official size of a men's basketball is a seven, but a 3x3 basketball is a size six that weighs the same as a seven. The games are 10 minutes long and there are no quarter or half time breaks. Players score one point inside the arc and two points outside the arc. It's the first team to 21 points up wins or the team who has the most points after 10 minutes. You only have half the time to score and play does not stop after you do. Offense turns to defense instantly. It's a far more physical game and fouls are less likely to be called. There are unlimited substitutions, but the coach cannot talk to their team during play. So, now you know the rules of 3x3 basketball. Do you want to play? Kofi and Miles are both talented enough to make the Team England squad, but really, there's only one person they need to convince. Julius Joseph is Team England's first 3x3 men's head coach. Obviously, we're playing in Birmingham, hometown. That's where um, the basketball is going to be held this summer. Um, Kofi Joseph and Miles, let's start with Kofi, man. What do you think of his game? So, I love Kofi, and he's come in and he's, he's played at Plymouth, and he was went crazy at the beginning of the season. Yeah, he, he set the British, eight, yeah. the British um, leading scoring record. Yeah. So. So he, you know, absolutely went, you know, crazy. But um, and now he's not playing again. So it's like, it's yeah, the inconsistency mm. is there, which is a shame. Mm. Miles. So Miles is built for three x three. You know, he's strong. Yeah. He can shoot, and he can move quick. He's athletic. There's not much more you need <laughs> than you know having to be able to do all that. Yeah, man. And how's the preparation going? So yeah, we've got a good couple months worth of preparation that's going to be taking place. Um, we're going to start um, with a camp over here and then from there we, we narrow the squad down and kind of work with those guys. Going to Serbia and they are the they are free x free. So going over there and playing and getting a bit of preparation from those guys is going to be great. In terms of, you know, looking at selecting a team, it's a case of guys making the right play. You know, I don't need somebody scoring all the time. I need mm -hmm. people that's going to make the right smart play, mm -hmm. um, people that can adjust. And with free, free basketball, I prepare the team, but during the actual game, I can't speak. Really? I can't speak. I'm not allowed to say anything. So I thought, well, what are they going to do if I start saying one or two things? So I thought, let me start saying a few things. He was like, warning for coaching, the next one's a technical. I said, all right, that's what they're going to do. All right, maybe I don't talk so far. Wow. But you can cheer, you know. Hey, well done. Next time, da 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 da, -da. <laughs> Next time, run down, set a screen, <laughs> yeah, go exactly. to the block, spin me. Exactly. <laughs> when you're a professional basketball player, Injuries are common and can have an extreme impact on your career. And even for me, big injuries have been a factor in why I'm not part of the Commonwealth Games selection process. The season was actually going well at the start, but I ended up rupturing my kidney. Just jumped for a rebound, got elbowed in my rib cage. And basically I thought I was I thought I was winded. So I carried on playing and then I was still in pain. And then I went to a physio upstairs. They were like, you need to go to the hospital. Um, I had surgery, had to sit out the whole season. And it was a tough one. When it's internal, you literally just have to sit there and let it heal. Not taking part is it's a bit frustrating because if I didn't have those injuries, 
However, knowing that I have had the injuries and how, like the toll that it's had on me physically, um, it's, it's, it will be unrealistic <laughs> for me to be there. Although I can't qualify for the Commonwealth Games this summer, I really want Kofi and Miles to represent us all. But it's harder for Miles to make a good impression when he's nearly 6,000 miles away playing professional basketball in Japan. I caught up with him on Zoom during his final weeks with the Japanese team. I've been out here for what, 10 months. Uh, we made the playoffs. Now, like you're coming back to Birmingham, man, for the Commonwealth Games, like potentially representing your country and playing. I would say it's a dream come true, but I never even would have dreamt that this was going to happen. Yeah. Kofi could potentially be playing as well. So how would how would that feel to be like playing with someone from Birmingham? It would be such a great experience. I mean, you, we, we grew up together playing basketball outside in the parks. And now to be able to do that on like one of the biggest stages possible, it's a dream come true. As adults and professional basketball players, me, Miles and Kofi believe that it's important to give back to the community here in Birmingham, where we grew up. Last year, Kofi redesigned his basketball court in Birmingham to celebrate the countdown to the Commonwealth Games. And Kofi was about to show me around the court on a sunny Sunday afternoon. That's me, miss 100, make one. But then everything changed. There's me and Saul, and then they've come to the car, they've got balaclavas on and knives and weapons. I look to my left, the guy that's right next to me, he's got a kosh. I look to the other guy, he's got a blade probably like this big. And then the third guy, he's got a machete. The guy said, yo, pass the keys. I'm like, what? No. He's like, yo, pass the keys now. The guy with the kosh, he's whacked that out. He's swung the kosh, I've dodged that. Soul started running. The guy with the machete, he's trying to get to Soul. The guy with the 10 inch blade, he's swung that right by me. The two of them are chasing me down the road and they're catching up to me. I've lost my phone at this time, but then hit a side road and I'm absolutely gone, dusted them. Um, ended up running into a church and then that's when I got help. Just coming back to the car, um, my back window smashed up. There's glass everywhere. It was quite hard, you know, to see the younger generation acting that way. However, it shows that there's a need um, for people like me and Kofi mentoring out there. I know people that were in the position that they're in as far as wanting quick money and like turning to knife crime to rob people and get cars or whatever to sell. Quick, fast money. 10 years down the line, that money's not gonna be there. So. I almost wanted to explain <laughs> explain the situation that they're in and where they will end up if they continue that way. Probably still in shock a little bit. I don't think I processed it fully. Um, exhausting mentally, exhausting physically. Um, I'm just glad my friends are okay, everyone's okay. Um, it was a bit traumatic um, because I felt the air when the knife went right past my neck. And if it would have been like an inch or two closer, probably could have been all over. Right, the Commonwealth Games. And for the basketball, this young man is the face. I didn't actually want to be here, to be honest. But then I thought about me when I was a younger kid and how all those talks that I listened to and how they inspired me, how they helped. Put your hands together for Cole for you, Joseph. When I first started playing basketball, I was in primary school, like some of you guys. Um, I used to get in trouble, a bit cheeky, run my mouth, all of that. And I used to get kicked out of class a lot. And then I came across my mentor, Mr. Thompson, gave me a ball. And I was like, what do you want me to do with this? And I he said to me, throw the ball. My first shot ever just went in. And from that day on, I had something in my life for the first time that kind of curbed my behavior. I used to I've been through a lot. Depression, anxiety, suicidal, X, Y, Z. And I've also got a psychology degree. So 
as I'm going through the madness, I'm learning about the madness. So it was just all crazy. And um, playing elite level sports also has its own like stigma and everything that comes with it. Who is your inspiration? Who's my inspiration? Probably say my mum, you know, yeah. Probably my mum, single parent family, grew up in the hood. And now that I'm older, I'm grown as man, I know exactly what certain women have to go through. So um, the fact that she was able as a single parent to like support me and help me do all my dreams, yeah, definitely, like, I, I get it now. Seeing their faces, how happy they were, um, how engaged they were, it outweighs the bad of the youths that I dealt with yesterday. Just got to England camp. It's like, yeah, we've got testing. Time to go get my gear, see what's good. It's time for the last team England training camp here in the UK. The top players in the country are all here to impress and get into the final qualifying camps abroad. With previous 3x3 experience, Miles is automatically through to the next round. But Kofi is in the middle of the action. Uh, everyone to the station. Yeah, man. Chill up. Um, so Kofi's been doing really well, you know, he's got a great body in terms of for playing 3x3, he's long, he's athletic, he can shoot the ball really, really well. He does have a, a, a lot less experience in 3x3 than the rest of some of the other guys, but um, he's got a, a great deal of potential. And it's probably, you know, some really hard decision making is going to be made along the way. And the thing is, because it's so cutthroat, because you only need four guys, you know, essentially, We've got 12 at camp, so it is really, really difficult to select guys and it might come down to the smallest amount of margins. It's been good, you know. Um, some of the guys I've known forever as well, so it's always nice to be back in the England setup. Um, yeah, I'm having fun. And helping Julius to choose the squad is former British NBA star Steve Bucknell. He played for the Los Angeles Lakers alongside some basketball legends. Playing with Magic Johnson and James Worthy, um, two of the players in the top 50 of all times, was kind of my highlight. And this is one of the ways uh, I'm able to give back. We're starting from the ground up, but we do have the makeup of players, both male and females, to where we felt we could be successful. And we're hoping that we can go from strength to strength this year. Tomorrow, we're going to pick some of the team uh, that are going to go over to, I think it's Romania or Serbia. It's going to be a tournament. And then later on, some more players are going to join the team throughout the summer uh, just to switch some things up. And then it'll, by that time, it'll be the game. So I think for me personally, I'm just focusing on it each day, doing what I'm supposed to, and then we'll see what happens. they have already started to build the basketball court at Smithfield. But what will the legacy of the games be after the final medal has been won? After the 2012 Olympics, UK Sport cut GB basketball funding from £7 million to zero. Today, the funding stands at £1.35 million over the four years for the Paris Olympics in 2024. But I'm going back to where it all started. City of Birmingham Rockets Basketball Club, who could be creating their own legacy with a new professional basketball team in the city. Rob Palmer coached me, Miles and Kofi as kids and even remembers the first time I picked up a basketball. One of the big things for us is, is or for me, is let's get something aspirational for our young people because professional basketball has been missing from the city. Um, for several years, there's been a couple of attempts in mm. one-year franchises over the past 20 years. Yeah, but a city of our size, with the talent that we have in the city, yeah, yeah. that comes through the city, is yeah. right. A 
and now the club are nurturing the next generation of Team England talent. What got you guys into basketball in the first place? Like, what was the first thing that happened? Well, I felt my brother, he used to take me to after school club with him, so I was like, this is really good. Okay, what about you, mate? Just throughout lockdown, I didn't really have anything to do. So I started picking up a sport, so I so basketball, mm -hmm. and I just fell in love with the game. So you guys have been playing for around a year each, and now you're about to represent England. How does that feel for you? It feels so amazing, like, it's the country. What about you, man? How does that feel? It was amazing just to think representing my country at such a young age. He was like quite quite tough for me because he's tough for my brother, but you understood you understood the relationship that we had. That's one thing that I always remember remember you for as a coach is giving me that confidence to unleash unleash my superpowers basically and just play basketball like just shoot it if I feel like I can make the shot make the shot feel like I can dunk it dunk it don't think about it just play. Yes, so. Yeah. So some of the players that you've previously coached in the years you know have been at COB and now potentially going to play in Team England. Like, how does that feel for you as a coach? And... That's an amazing pride from a basketball perspective. You know, they've, they've, they've reached the highest levels in this country and, and, and as yourself, you've gone and played in Europe. And you know, to see them come back and, you know, all of you kind of want to be around the club and still be prepared to give time and, to the kids and, and play around here now. It just speaks volumes for me of the, the people. That, that's the biggest thing. And when we see guys that maybe at 23, 24 that have landed themselves in good careers, good positive people that could have gone off the rails as young as, yeah, that's kind of where I get my most pleasure. But, but you know, I'm very, very proud of, of, of all of you, really. But there's one person that knows more about our careers than anyone else. And this time, I've got to go just a little bit further than Birmingham. I'm in Dubai. So I'm here to meet my brother, Josh. He's a former professional basketball player who is now coaching a local team. Hi, man. How's it been? Ah, yeah, man. We've got a game tonight. Nice. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, you see me in action, coaching. <laughs> Hopefully we can get a, a win today. Yeah, man. If you don't win, I'm gonna be onto you. <laughs> And obviously, when I started playing, you was also my role model, and uh, still are my role model. Um, oh, who, thanks, was your, who was yours, man? I'm your role model. Am I your role model? Well, sometimes. <laughs> it depends how I'm feeling, you know what I mean? Remember, we had that, uh, like, our granddad made that um, basketball hoop at the bottom of the garden out, out of a climbing, climbing frame. frame. <laughs> yeah, so, bro. to be honest, crazy. you know, obviously, our friends used to come over and we all used to like just play, shoot around in the back garden. Mm. And uh, you know, it wasn't like one of those half court NBA, no, it was like mud everywhere. Like yeah, we used man. to ruin mum's grass. grass. You remember that? We burnt the grass out <laughs> so we could, burn, we could bounce the ball on that. Yeah. Dust. It's nice to see, um, you know, mm. the Commonwealth Games coming to Birmingham, coming to our hometown. Right. And even, even better, it's nice to see obviously Are guys gonna... that I've grown up with and players that I know playing yeah. in it. And I think I was saying to you like the other day, like I remember when I first kind of saw Miles and again, it was in neutrals in the hub. Right. And uh, probably we were like 15, 16, something like that. And yo, like he was not as tall as he is now. You know, he was a bit chubby. Yeah. Um, when I actually got to know him, he actually suffered from asthma. Yeah, he was um, saying. Yeah. Um, and But you know what? Again, like he just had this spark. He had this consistency and this tenacity about him. Um, and again, I think that's that's a great story for those who think, oh, you know, maybe I'm too short or I'm too this or I'm too that for yeah, basketball. To overcome. Man, overcome he exceeded person. everyone's um, expectations, you know. So it's great to see Kofi, again, yeah, very, man, very talented. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, a lot of heart. Um, his skills, his fundamentals were very good from the start. Big bro's putting in work with the younger generation. Bringing back to the community here in Dubai. Love to see it, man. He's doing really well. Go back and watch it. The countdown clock to the Commonwealth Games is ticking away. And I've just had a video message from Kofi. 
Team England have just made their decision. Yo, bro. What's good? What are you telling me? That was an experience for me. Obviously, I didn't really know the rules, this, that, and the other. Just tried to do my thing. It was enjoyable, though, being back in England, set up with everyone. It was a good experience. Went there, did my thing, enjoyed it for what it was. I'm out. Wow. So it sounds like Kofi didn't get into the final six of the England team. However, he had a great season last season when he played for Plymouth. It just sounded like it's a new style of basketball for him, which he didn't really like and struggled to adapt to so fast because he hasn't played before. While Kofi's journey has come to an end, Miles is still in the running. He's been at training camp in Serbia. We really had fun out there, learning from the best three at three team in the world. They had a lot to teach us. I mean, every day was a new, a new challenge, a new like set or system to learn. But we were trying different combinations of of, of players potentially that were going to be the final four that would go to the Commonwealth Games. If you had to pick one, three on three basketball or five on five basketball. What would you pick if you had to play one for the rest of your life? I'd say three on three, you know? Really? Yeah. Wow, I was it? It's just, all, it's just all offense, like, yeah, all you offense. Can just take it out and heap straight away. Defense, it's just, there's no in between. What I really want to know is who's the best? He's never beat me at anything. <laughs> yeah, I have, bro. No, at I beat you in one nothing. shooting competition, bro. At nothing, bro. I have? Never. Yeah, I have. He had to buy me a pint and some wings before he went to Japan. Because Do you even listen to yourself couple, when you're back. making up these lies? Hit a step back fade away and that. This sounds like one but of those yeah. dreams right now. So that's just what happened, guys. <laughs> Please. It's like one out of how many? Do you? Exactly. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and now it's time for the moment of truth. Has Miles made it? Will he be playing for Team England in his hometown at the Commonwealth Games? We know that Miles is good enough to play in the team, but it's so important that he keeps his body healthy. Um, he's like family to me, so I'm hoping that he makes it. Um, obviously, now that Kofi didn't get in, um, we need one more, one of us, one of us have to make it. Hey Miles, how you doing? Just the official call to say that you're part of that final four for the Commonwealth Games, along with um, Jamel, um, Kane and Orlan as well. All right, all right, nice one. Have a good evening, man. Take care. All right, all right, all right. I'm super gassed that my boy made it as captain of Team England. But of course, if you watch the Commonwealth Games, you know that wasn't the end of the story. It was a surreal experience for me, being at the Alexander Stadium. That's where I used to have my sports day for school. Boy, the whole of Birmingham was still like that. <laughs> <laughs> Once you walk into that stadium and you know everybody's cheering, especially Team England being in Birmingham, the cheering's even louder and everybody's, you know, there to see, you know, us basically as athletes and coaches. Once we got actually into the stadium and we were behind the flag bearer and uh, there were hundreds of Team England athletes, it just went in slow motion. And it was, you know, such a special time for the guys, but I think what I kind of give the guys up and let them know is, you know, no matter what's going on and what's happening around you, as crazy as it gets, we're there to do a job. For the four days, I think it was like four or five days that the basketball tournament was on, it was like probably the most stressful, nervous, basketball I've ever had in my life. I'm from Birmingham, it's in my hometown. I've got so many people coming to watch me. When we first started practicing on the court, I think the nerves took over a little bit because nobody could make a shot. 
So we were doing all these shooting drills and nobody was making any shots. I, I kind of had to stop practice and say, look, guys, just, you know, relax a little bit. Let's, you know, just the, the hoop's still there, the basket's still there, the floor's still where it normally is. So, you know, just get relaxed and play. So, you know, nerves did come into a little bit when uh, the guys started practicing, but after a while, you know, they got more comfortable on that floor. I didn't sleep. I was just in my bed up basically all night, just going through different scenarios from like the last game or what's going to happen in the next game. And yeah, I was really nervous because I put a lot of pressure on myself. But as soon as I get on the court, the nerves go and it's just like, okay, now it's, it's goal time, it's game time. And finally, we're in best number 22. I never get tired of saying this, the hometown hero, Miles Exxon. Team England started the Commonwealth Games as the underdogs, but the men's team soon became the ones to beat as they dominated every game in the group stage. All our focus was, was each game, winning each game. We couldn't think about any of the seeding or any of the different scenarios of where we could be playing this side. Or every game we went into, we had to dominate that game and just and win that one. And that's what we did step by step. Both the England men and women's 3x3 basketball teams made it to the final. With Miles and his squad beating the Canada team by just one point. Now, they were only one step away from becoming the first ever Commonwealth Games 3x3 basketball champions. We're the most inexperienced team, probably in the tournament, you know, getting together and being together for about three months. So after the Canada game, when we knew we had a, a guaranteed medal, a lot of the pressure was gone that I put on myself up to that point. But then the new pressure was on, it was like, okay, it was in England the Australia final and both teams were fighting for that gold medal. But with the scores tied at the end of the game, they went into overtime. Now when it went to overtime, all the strategy and everything just goes out the window. It's just two teams just battling. So when Australia went up um, by a point, I was like, oh, oh here we go. We're, we're going to drop this one. And then um, they took that shot. <laughs> And he took the shot and I was like, oh my God, please no, please no. He thought it was good, I thought it was good. I think the crowd thought it was good. It bubbled in, bubbled out. And it rattled in and it, it hung on the lip of the rim and then it just came out. <laughs> and um, the Australian coach told me that it's like the crowd sucked that ball out the hoop. <laughs> OJ went, tapped it out. And as he tapped it out, I'm going to gather the ball. I knew the whole time as I was going to gather it that I'd be open. I was really hoping that the wind just wouldn't affect my shot because if you was in the stadium, you'd know, but if you was watching on, on at back at home on TV, like you wouldn't realise how windy it was. So yeah, that was the main thought in my head was I hope the wind doesn't mess this up because I know I'm going to shoot it. I have to, we're down one, we need a two to win. I looked down, I settled my feet, made sure I was behind the line. And yeah, just trusting my instincts, trusting my training and just let it fly. And then nailed the two-pointer to win the game. And you know, for it to be Miles that hit that shot in Birmingham, hometown hero obviously is uh, a, a, definitely a highlight and one of the greatest things I've been a part of. And then when it went in, that was like, that roar that you see me do, uh, that came from the heart, that came from within. It was just a real explosion of everything. And it's, it's what you dream about. And to be able to do that in Birmingham is, it's, it's just incredible. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity that, that we seized. The first gold medal in the history of basketball for, for, for Team England, you know, it, that's an incredible achievement. Gold medalist and Commonwealth Games champion, England. So Miles is now a hometown hero and he wants his gold medal to do some good. Like I said, that's like my biggest reward for this whole thing. This gold medal almost means more on a, like a national stage than it does to me because I get to take this into schools, I get to take it into play schemes and 
whether it's basketball or not, it's, it's really inspiring to see someone coming from where they're from with like a gold medal around their neck. And yeah, the, the response I've had so far has been, it's been crazy. It's been good just to see the, the kids' faces. Now, Miles is not the only one inspiring young people in Birmingham. We donated an early cut of our home court documentary to a local literacy charity. At Miles' Old School, they are using it to improve reading and writing by getting students to create their own documentary pitches. It was inspiring because it's so close to home and the fact that they used to come, like they came from rock bottom and then they made it to the like they made it pro is very inspiring. We really talked about um, like difficulties, like you're too short, too big. Like I was, I'm, I'm like five foot three, and like I don't think I'm gonna make it anywhere. But like I really want to play basketball for a living. Personally, I work with um, um, Zero Basketball Rockets, and seeing that and seeing the person that's going to Commonwealth just you stuck to me. Uh, did you feel that it was there was enough in there about Birmingham? Did you feel like it was a Birmingham documentary? But with Amelia. Um, like her documentary led me to think, oh, um, like people are behind a mask and like have dreams too. Like they want to do something before they commit the crime. Yeah, I quite relate to Kofi. For one, he had a lot of knife crime going on in his area. I grew up in Handoff, so I had a similar problem. Uh, I also loved basketball, same way Kofi does, but I didn't have the equipment, the tools, none of that. I, I couldn't even play at my local park. The rooms are that bad. What has been missing, and I'm going to say it, is, you know, a little bit of more appreciation from outside the basketball community, you know, in terms of what we've been able to achieve. You know, we want to name something more exciting than what happened in our final. It would be very, very hard to, within that whole Commonwealth Games um, tournament, and it just didn't get the, the, the shine which I thought that it deserves. Now, a silver and a gold medal by the men and the women, it doesn't get any better than that. So the funding now has to be there. There's, and there's got to be an improvement of the funding as well. There's got to be a, a high performance um, program within 3x3 that kind of can run all year round. Because those are the things that are, we're going to need in order to take the next step to, to be in the Olympics. Now it's time for, for you know, the other side to step up and, and to help support what we're doing. So maybe we'll see Julius and Miles back soon, competing to get in the 2024 Olympics. But for now, I'll leave the final words to my boy Miles, who made history on his home court. There's always going to be doubt, there's always going to be fear, there's always going to be nerves, like that's just part of being human, but then at the end of the day, if you know what your, your end goal is, there's no point not trying to get that. Thankfully, myself, my teammates, the coaching staff, the team management staff, they all had the same, same goal, the same vision. And uh, yeah, it, it worked out.